election in an election several candidates contested for a constituency yeah mm -hmm. good election in any constituency the winning candidate was the one who polled the highest number of votes yeah the first runner up was the one who polled the second highest number of votes second runner up was the one who polled third highest number of votes and so on nothing nothing new here there are no ties in terms of number of votes polled by the candidates nice simple in any of the constituencies in this election in an electoral system a security deposit is a sum of money that a candidate is required to pay to the election commission before he or she is permitted to contest this is true right? you guys should, should know this only the defeated candidates that is one who is not the winning candidate who failed to secure more than one sixth of the valid votes polled to the constituency lose their security deposit if you fail to secure more than one sixth that is, if you don't get more than one sixth, then you lose your uh, security deposit. But only the defeated candidates. Right? So you must lose and you must have failed to secure one sixth. So if you've got less than one sixth, but you have won, then you get your deposit. That means if there's say 40 candidates and the maximum anyone polled is only 15% or 12%, and that guy won. If you win, and even if you have polled less than one thing, if you have won the election, then you're obviously you won. You, can, you are the best candidate. So obviously you can't forfeit your security deposit if you have won an election. So the security is lost out only if you are defeated. You have not won. If you are defeated and you've got one sixth or lesser, then you forfeit your deposit. If you've got more than one sixth, even if you have lost, then more than one sixth of the candidates, uh, uh, the people seem to like you that means you've got something going for you we don't lose your security deposit right the following table provides some incomplete information about votes polled in four constituencies a b c and d in this election let's, let's see that before we go further a there were 10 candidates the number of total number of valid votes polled were 5 lakhs the winning candidate got 2.75 lakhs or oh, even by a massive margin he won more than half the votes second first runner up was 95000 Second, third, we don't know. Constituency B, there are 12 candidates, 3,25,000. The winning candidate gets only 48,750. They're very small. So this guy is romping to power. That guy is squeezing him. Fine. And then nothing else is given. C, 630. 30 is like an unusual number and nothing else is given. D, we don't know how many are there. We don't know what the winning candidate got. The first runner-up got 37,500. Second one got 30,000. The third runner up got 10%. And so this guy lost his deposit. 16.66% is 1.6. He is losing his deposit. That much we know. Lovely. Now let's go to what else is given. The following additional facts are known. The first runner up pulled 10,000 more votes than the second runner up in constituency A. Lovely. That means the first runner up got 95,000. Second one must have got 85,000. Life is simple. One data. I, I hope everything else is as easy as this. None of the candidates who contested in constituency C lost their security deposit. The difference in votes polled by any pair of candidates in this constituency was at least 10,000. This is very interesting. Very interesting. Nobody lost their security deposit. That means everybody got more than one sixth. Only five candidates. Each of them got more than one sixth. And one sixth into five itself was five sixths. The margins must have been very tight. Even the fifth candidate has got more than one sixth. One sixth of six lakh thirty we can find. That's a bare minimum. The, each of the candidates has got more than this guy. They're, no, they're not even a tie. So very interesting. And the, the difference in votes polled by any pair of candidates is at least 10,000. So we know what the minimum guy has got. That plus 10,000 is the minimum the guy above him has got. That plus 10,000 is the minimum the guy above him has got and so on. So not just it's a tightly contested election, tightly contested but spaced apart. It's not like they're getting x, x plus 1, x plus 2, x plus 3 and then x plus 75,000. They're almost equally spaced. So there could be something in the numbers there. Let's dig deeper into that. The winning candidate in constituency D polled 5% of the valid votes, more than that of the first runner-up. All the candidates who lost their security deposits while contesting for this constituency put together Pulled 35% of the valid votes. So this guy gets 37,500 plus 5% of total. And then there is this total that we don't know. Maybe call it total or T. This guy gets 37,500 plus 5%. That should give us something about D as well. That's it, nothing else. There are only three conditions. And 
constituency A, something about C, something about D, there's nothing given about B. Well, let's go step by step. I think this will be the juiciest. Number of candidates, 10. So we've just captured this data. Let's look at this. The first runner-up pulled 10,000 more than the second runner-up. So the second runner-up got 85,000 that we know. Just using K to denote 1,000, so putting three zeros all the time. This number is not friendly. So I've used it as it is 6 lakhs and 30. Right, so very interesting. This case won a lot. So this is 170 plus 275. 275 plus one, not 170, 180. So this is 455,000 already accounted for. So anybody coming below this, all of them put together have won only 45,000 votes. Out of 5 lakh, they've accounted for 4 lakh 55,000, really just the first three. This is how typically elections are. As you go down, this says tail ends. Nobody wins too many votes. Lovely. Now let's move to the other juicy condition. So this is candidates. See, one sixth of this, right? one sixth of six lakh thirty. One sixth of six lakh is one lakh. One sixth of thirty is five. So the security deposit number is one lakh and five. That's a security. I'm not saying that's a winner number. The security deposit number is one lakh and five. Nobody lost that security deposit. That means everyone won more than one lakh five beautiful that's not the only thing so we also know that among the five candidates the cap between any two of them is at least ten thousand it's brilliant 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 so the least one candidate five has got more than one lakh five or candidate five got greater than or equal to one lakh six and so I'm going to write it down like this. Why? Because candidate 4 is greater than or equal to 1 lakh 6 plus 10,000. At least 10,000 gap should be there. So if I write this like C5, C4, C3, C2, C1. This is X. This is X plus 10K. At least. This is X plus 20K. At least. This is X plus 30K. At least. This is X plus 40K. At least. So each of them is greater than or equal to this, greater than or equal to this, greater than or equal to this, greater than or equal to this. I find that very fascinating. Why? Because if you had x, 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 that is 5x. That is nice and juicy. If you had 10k, 20k, 30k, 40k, that is 1 lakh. 10,000 plus 20,000 plus 30,000 plus 40,000 is 1 lakh. So 5x plus 1 lakh. And so, and that should add up or each of them is more than at least this much. That comes up to 6 lakhs 30. That I think, I think, I think, my gut feel is we'll end up having a very narrow range for X. Because X has to be more than 1 lakh 6. This has to be more than 1 lakh 6 plus 10,000. 1 lakh 6 plus 20,000. 1 lakh 6 plus 30,000. 1 lakh 6 plus 40,000. Brilliant. So this will give us basically add all of them up. So 1 lakh 6, 1 lakh 6 plus 10,000, 1 lakh 6 plus 20, 1 lakh 6 plus 30, 1 lakh 6 plus 40. So if I do C1 plus C2 plus C3 plus C4 plus C5, that is 5 times 1 lakh 6 plus 1 lakh. The 10,000 plus 20,000 plus 30,000 plus 40,000 is 1 lakh. The total should be greater than or equal to this. 5 times 1 lakh 6 is 5 lakhs 30 plus 1 lakh or the total should be greater than or equal to 6 lakhs and 30. The total is 6 lakh 30. It has to be greater than or equal to 6 lakh 30. That means the total can only be 6 lakh 30. There is only one possibility. We are through. I originally when I thought this, I thought there will be two numbers only possible. 1 lakh 6 and 1 lakh 7 or 1 lakh 5 and 1 lakh 6 are three numbers, five, six, and seven, and then you, you do some permuting and figuring out and what is, got very lucky. Only one number possible. So the least guy pulls exactly one vote more. If he had got one vote lesser, he would have lost his security deposit. The bare minimum to get clear, to, to not forfeit a security deposit, he gets it. The next guy scores exactly 10K more than that. The guy above him scores 10K more than this guy. Plus 10k plus 10k, it adds up to 6 lakh 30. The numbers are so tight, there's only one possibility there. 
the least guy, guy who scores the least, gets one lakh six. Then one lakh, one lakh ten thousand and six. The numbers are wrong. One lakh ten thousand and six. One lakh twenty thousand and six. Thirty thousand and six. Forty thousand and six. The, the, the zeros are a little shifted, but don't worry. With one lakh ten thousand and six, one lakh twenty thousand and six, one lakh thirty thousand and six, one lakh forty thousand and six. Done. We've got this entire table done for uh, for for C. Only one possibility available there. Now let's move on to D. The winning candidate in constituency D pulled five percent of the total votes, valid votes, more than that of the first runner. We got thirty-seven thousand five hundred plus five percent of total. All the candidates who lost their security deposits pulled sixty-five percent of the valid votes. Runner-up two onwards, everybody lost their security deposit. This downwards. Everybody lost their security deposit. And now we could have a wonderful scenario where only all of these lost, these three retained, or even this guy could have lost, and everybody else retains. So all of these definitely lost, or even runner up two could have lost, or even runner up one could have lost. I'm already sensing that runner up one also losing is not possible because this guy scored just five percent more. And, 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 and these two add up to 65%. So I'm going to eliminate something and then come back to this. Let's assume hypothetically that runner up two also lost your security deposit. So from here onwards, adds up to 35%. That means the remaining, these two, add up to 65% of the total votes. 5% goes off or 37.5, 37.5, 37.5K plus 37.5k adds up to 60 percent or 37,500 is 60 percent or 37,500 is 30 percent or 30,000 will be 25 percent 24 percent somewhere there that cannot have lost a security deposit or the scenario where from runner up to everybody loses that is wrong runner up to retains it all three retain it from here downwards goes for a toss. Let's do the math for that. That means 37.5k plus 5% of total plus 37.5k plus 30k. These three add up to 65%. The first three retain their deposit. Everyone else after that loses. 37.5 plus 37.5 is 75k plus 30 is 105k. This 5% goes to that side or 105k is equal to 60% of total. 37.5 plus 37.5 plus 5% 5 of total plus 30k is 65% of total. This 5% goes to this side becomes 60% or total is 105,000 into 100 by 60 or into 5 by 3 is 35. 35 into 5, 175k. The total is 175k, 5% 5 of total is whatever it is. So 37.5k plus 5% 5 of 175k is what the winner gets, which is 46.25k. 5% 5 of 175k is 5 by 100 into 175000. So 5 5 is a 25, 5 2, 37, 7, 3, 8, 7, 5, 0. 8, 7, 5, 0 plus 37,500 takes us to 46.25k. 46250. So now we've got the total number of votes polled in D. What the winner got, what runner up 1 got, runner up 2 got, what all of them put together got, what this guy got, everything we've got. Complete, complete data. We've got a reasonably full data on C and D. We've got sufficient amount on A. Let's look at B. And very interesting. B is very interesting. 325,000 votes were polled. The guy who won got 48.75. And so what is one sixth of 325? One sixth of 300 is 50,000. One sixth of 325 is more than 50,000. So this guy has got less than one sixth of the vote. We've got a scenario which we discussed where you might win with less than one sixth of the votes. This guy has won with less than one sixth of the votes. That means everybody below him has lost their security deposit. Everybody below has got less than one sixth. 
This guy, the guy who won has got less than 1.6. That guy can't lose his security deposit. He's won. The guy who wins can get any number of votes and he'll still have his deposit. There are 10,000 guys contesting and there are 11,000 seats. So the guy can technically win by getting three votes or two votes. Fine. So that 11,000 votes, three votes and he can win. So that is nothing as a share of overall. But if you win, then your security deposit is retained. And so this guy does not lose a security deposit. Everyone else, they've lost and pulled less than 1.6. They're all out. Fine. Lovely. Now let's go to the right here. What are the percentage of votes pulled in total by all the candidates who lost their security deposits while contesting for constituency A? We did this math already. Add these three. 5, 15, 8, 17, 25, 5, 2, 4, has been accounted for. Or 45,000 is remaining. 45,000 out of 500,000 is what everybody else added up to. Percentage of votes pulled in total by all the candidates. So all candidates below this, leaving out the top three, remaining seven candidates put together pulled 45,000 votes out of 500,000. That is a percentage. 45 by 500 into 100. 45 by 5, 9%. Yep, that works. How many candidates who contested in constituency B lost their security deposit? To discuss this. This guy doesn't lose. Is one everybody else loses. So this guy doesn't lose. So out of 12, one candidate won. That much we know. A remaining 11, they all lost. And they all pulled less than 1.6. So 11 guys lost their deposit. What best can be concluded about the number of votes pulled by the winning candidate in constituency? So it's, this is 1,40,000 and 6. The exact answer. We've done this. We've done this iteratively, brilliantly. The least candidate got 1 lakh and 6. 1 lakh 10,000 6, 1 lakh 20,000 6, 1 lakh 30,000 6, 1 lakh 40,000 6. One beautiful, unique answer. Only one answer. 1 lakh 40,000 and 6. What are the number of valid votes polled in constituency D? Got this. 175,000. Done. The winning margin of a constituency is defined as the difference of votes polled by the winner and that of the first runner-up, which of the following cannot be the list of constituencies in increasing order of winning margin. Increasing order of winning margin. First of all, winning margin for A is huge, gigantic. 275,000 minus 95,000. Just 180,000. A has got to be the last. Okay, that part is done. Easy inference, therefore it doesn't help us at all. These two winning margins we can find. For C, the winning margin is 10,000. For D, the winning margin we calculated this, it's 5%. 5 by 100 into 175,000. Eight seven five zero. So we're looking at increasing order of winning margin. That means D is less than C. And everything is less than A. And so that much we know. It could be B here, B here, B here. That we don't know. D less than C less than A, we know. Right? And A is greater than everything else. Now B, 1 by 48.75. Maybe we can find 11 candidates remaining. Even if all of them got equal, that will be the scenario where the difference will be maximum. So we can find that 325 minus 48.75 divided by 11. We can find out if all of them got an equal number of votes. Not equal, but plus or minus something, one vote, two vote. We can find the ballpark for that. 325 minus 50 is 275. 275 by 11. 275 is 25. So the maximum difference would be in the ballpark of 25,000. The minimum difference could be 3, 4, anything. And so it could be slightly lower, that will still work. There's nothing wrong. I can do the math to work after that. The maximum difference could be 24,000, 25,000, 23, 24,000. So I can technically have D here, a B here, or B here also. That's tricky. I'm not able to place B anywhere. Let's look at the choices. B, D, C, A, yeah, it seems possible. D, B, C, A should be possible. D, C, B, A should be possible. B, C, D, A, this is not possible. 
we know D is less than C, B, C, D is not possible. We need not even have evaluated where B would sit. All we need to know is D is less than C, this doesn't work. Which of the following cannot be the list of quantities in increasing order of winning margin? This cannot be it. B, C, D, A cannot be an order in which this can, this can appear. For all the four constituencies taken together, what are the approximate number of votes polled by all the candidates who lost their security de deposit expressed as a percentage of total valid votes from these four constituencies? Total valid votes we have, we have clearly that we can add up. How much was polled by candidates who lost their security deposit? In A, we've already calculated this 45k. And so in B, we want an approximate answer to start with, except this guy, everybody else lost their deposit, security deposit. That I can find out. So 325k minus 48.75k. 325k minus 48.75k. This is 0.25. 14 minus 8 is 6, 11 minus 4 is 7, 276.25, lovely. D, everyone, in C, everyone got their security deposit back, that is 0. In D, it is 35% of 175k. And so, 35% of 175k, I have to find the number, so... 35 by 100 times 175,000. 35 fives are 175, 5 seven. 35 sevens are 245, 252, 225, 60250. 60.25k is the largest number, 276.25, and then 60.25, 45. I'm going to add these two numbers, these three numbers. 276.25, 60 45. The point 0.5 sitting here, 5 plus 6, 11, 1, 1, 8, 14, 18, 8, 1, 381.5. That is the total number of votes pulled by guys who lost their deposit. Right? And then what is the percentage of total valid votes? Total valid votes is 500, 325. 600, 175. Let's add all of that. 381.5. I know I have. I have 500. Let me just go back and look at these numbers. 325, 600, 325, 600, 175. This is 0, 0, 1, 6, 9, 15, 16. 381.5 by 1600 into 100. This is the percentage we're looking for. 381.5 by 16. 381 by 16. I'm going to do this. Let me do the whole thing. It goes two times. 32. 61 it goes three times. 48. 130. It'll go eight times. 128. So 23.8 something, not 23.5, 23.91 is closer because the we made, we made some one two tiny approximation. This works. Of course, this becomes far simpler if you have a calculator just to help you do this, doing the doing the mathematics part of it. But not rocket science. Once you've done the whole grid, then answering this question should be a should be a sitter. And so very doable set. Very the, the crucial part is cracking that C. A, B, D are simpler, cracking C and figuring out that for C, actually after all the gap, there is only one possibility that sits for number of words. That's like a breakthrough. Sit in the exam, you get a feeling of relief. You check it one more time to say, yeah, yeah, only one. Then you're good. The moment you crack that funda, you're saying, look, I'm, I'm nailing this and you should get it right.